Hello and welcome to the Click Extension API course. In this course you're going to learn what ClickSense extensions are and more importantly how to build them. Before taking this course you should be comfortable with the basic concepts of HTML, CSS and JavaScript. You'll also need ClickSense desktop installed and running and a copy of the WBY Sales QVF file. To learn more about the setup required for these courses check out our Getting Started with WebSea Academy video. To create solutions with the Click Extension APIs, you can use the tool of your choice. Here are some of the editing tools that we would recommend. Click also provide an IDE, or Integrated Development Environment, called the Dev Hub, which can be used to develop extensions and solutions with the Extension API. We won't be focusing on the Dev Hub a lot in this course, but if you want to take a look yourself, you can open it directly from the ClickSense Hub. Visualization extensions provide a mechanism for hooking into the ClickSense UI and the engine to add new visualizations and or capabilities. A single extension exists in its own folder and in its most basic form will consist of two files a main script file that contains the core extension's code, and a QEXT file which contains the metadata for the extension in JSON format. Both of these files should have the same name as the extension folder. To build a ClickSense extension locally with ClickSense Desktop, we can place our custom extension inside the extensions directory, which by default is located here. We're going to create a Hello World extension. This directory is going to contain two files, both of which will be named consistently with our folder name, so Hello World.qbxt and Hello World.js. The QEXT file can have any number of properties, but as a minimum, the type and name properties need to be specified. The type property is mandatory. This defines the type of extension. It should always be visualization for visualization extensions. The name is displayed in the toolbox when editing a sheet. The following properties are optional and can be defined in the QEXT file if you wish to provide further metadata information that can be used by the ClickSense client. At this stage, when we add the extension to a sheet, it isn't going to display anything. Don't worry, this is currently the expected result. We haven't added anything to the core JavaScript file, so there isn't anything for it to draw, do, or create. To build an extension, we need to use the JavaScript module loader framework, RequireJS. We won't be covering RequireJS in detail, but we'll show you what's required for ClickSense extension development. Extensions themselves are effectively a RequireJS module, which start by calling the define function. Inside of this function, we need to provide two parameters. The first is an array of dependencies that we want to make available within our extension module. The second is a callback function, which is executed once all of the dependencies are loaded and ready. This callback function should return an object which contains several predefined properties. The first one we're going to look at is paint. The paint property should be a function and is used to render the visualization. It will be called every time the visualization should be rendered, such as when a selection is made. It also receives two parameters, $element, which is a jQuery representation of the containing HTML element, and layout which is an object that contains the metadata and data for the extension based on any specified dimensions, measures, and properties. For our extension to produce an output of hello world, we can write the following inside of our paint function. You can stay up to date with all of our content by subscribing to our YouTube channel or following us on social media.
If you'd like to see more from this course, then head over to websy.academy, where you'll find our full set of training courses complete with hands-on activities and much more.